it may not be an age-old question, but when you hear it, the answer seems too simple to be true. But is it? Our most successful video so far on this channel was one where we tackled an old internet argument about who would win, one trillion lions or the sun. This spawned a whole host of comments, including many follow-up questions. The one that inspired this video, though, comes from Sword of Kings 12, who asks, what about one trillion suns versus one lion? This is what we're going to look at for today's random astronomy question, as well as revealing what we'll be focusing on for series two of Watch This Space, which will run through much of this autumn term. But first, let's turn the tables on the lions and see how they like being outnumbered. Yes and no. One sun is more than enough to finish off a lion, so a trillion suns is not going to make anything better for that solitary lion. It will last a fraction of a second before badness takes over. But rather than focusing on the lion suffering, let's look at what happens to one trillion suns all in close proximity to each other. For simplicity, I'm going to imagine that we've cloned the sun many times for this. Otherwise, we have to consider different sizes for different stars, different masses, and all sorts of other things that would make this super complicated. If we put the suns in a grid formation, both vertically and horizontally, we could fit in a trillion suns as a cube, with 10,000 suns across in each dimension. If we pack the suns in so tight that each one touches the next, that gives each side a length of 1.4 times 10 to the 13 metres across. That's 92 astronomical units, which works out as about three times the distance from the sun to Neptune. To say that this is going to end badly would be a massive understatement. The gravitational attraction of the suns on each other would be ridiculously large, causing a collapse of our solar system. In terms of energy transfers, this would involve gravitational potential energy turning into kinetic and thermal energy. So the mass and temperature towards the centre of this collapse will skyrocket. This could lead to a couple of potential outcomes. 1. It triggers the fusion of heavier elements in the core of the forming superstar, accelerating its life cycle rapidly and then entering into a supernova phase which could eject some of that material outwards. The core left behind would then collapse into a black hole. 2. It triggers a black hole forming without a supernova via direct collapse, allowing a greater proportion of the mass to stay in what's been left behind. Either way, we're getting a pretty sizable black hole. Now, it won't necessarily have all the mass of the stars in it, as some mass is ejected during things like a supernova. And if the growing central mass undergoes a supernova before much of the other stars join it, some of those suns could be thrown out of this overall system. Now this is where things get a little bit more hand wavy and I've decided not to run the numbers largely because we would need a supercomputer to simulate this and by comparison my laptop sometimes freezes when it tries to open a PowerPoint document. But what is certain is that we're potentially looking at the largest black hole to ever exist. Depending on the method of black hole formation we're either looking at 10 to 50% of the mass from a supernova leading to a black hole, but more like 90% if it was formed via direct collapse. This gives us a potential black hole with a mass in the range of 100 billion to 900 billion solar masses. Quite big. For reference, the largest known black hole is currently under debate. 
as some candidates have only had their masses roughly estimated at this stage. But quite a few of the sources that I looked at had it listed as this, TUN618. It seems to have a mass of around 66 billion solar masses, meaning that our collapsing mess of cloned suns would be a new record breaker. Hooray! At this point, it would not be classified as a regular black hole, nor a supermassive black hole, but an ultra-massive black hole. But, so far, we have a number that represents its mass, but no real sense of just how big this thing is. No idea of its sense of scale. To work out the radius of a black hole out to the event horizon, which is the last point where light could escape from its gravitational pull, we need this equation. Rs represents the Schwarzschild radius, with g being a constant relating to gravity, m being the mass of the black hole in kilograms, and c being the speed of light. Inputting the actual values for the highest possible mass of our ultramassive black hole, we end up with a radius of 2.65 times 10 to the 15 meters. Now, that might not really mean much though, because it's hard to visualize something on that scale. One light year is 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. So this black hole would have a radius approximately one quarter of a light year across. This is just under 18,000 astronomical units, meaning that if we place this ultramassive black hole in the center of our solar system, it would take over the region covered by the sun, all eight planets, moons, asteroids, and enter into the Oort cloud at its very edges. So, if you get a chance to attack a lion with any number of stars, don't. A. It isn't fair on the lion. We've talked about this before. And B. It might backfire pretty spectacularly. You may be relieved to know that this is the last time I'm intending on making a video that faces wild cats against giant balls of plasma. What is coming up though is Watch This Space Season 2. This will be a set of videos over the coming weeks on a more focused theme. Series 1 look closely at the Moon, our nearest neighbour, and Series 2 is going to branch out a little bit more taking a look at stars and constellations. We'll have videos covering the life cycles of stars, how constellations came to be named, how binary systems work, and much more. In the meantime, please let us know if you've liked this video by pushing that like button. Also tell us in the comments if there's anything you want to know about stars for our upcoming series, and subscribe to the channel for more weekly content on astronomy. As ever, until next time, please continue to watch this space. Thank you.